Welcome folks, welcome to another episode of the Daniel Teaches Experience. I'm your host, Daniel. Guys, we got a bunch of things to cover today, but we can't go on without talking about the huge fight that happened between Khabib Nurmagomedov and Justin Gagey. And then after that, we'll get away from the MMA stuff for the rest of this episode. So folks, let's talk about what happened. Huge build up going into this. The two biggest takeaways are Khabib is as good as you think he is and the man retires. Guys, this is the story. This is what happened. Immediately, Khabib's putting the pressure on him. He's pushing him back against the fence. The thing that threw many people off was people thought he would shoot a lot earlier. The first two minutes was a lot of feeling out process. They were waiting for each other. You could tell how much Khabib respected Gagey's uh, power in the beginning and how much Gagey was, had this wide stance and he knew to keep his center of gravity down just in case Khabib was going to shoot him for a takedown. Two minutes into the first round, now Khabib just starts sh showing no respect. He's walking him down, running knees, punching straight, and Khabib got hit one or two times and they look pretty good, but it didn't phase Khabib at all. He kept marching him forward. They get close, man, back and forth. And eventually, Khabib gets him with a takedown. 30 seconds left in the first round, gets him down to the ground, and it looked like he was going to go for an arm bar. It looked like he was about to set an arm bar round one ends. Round one ends, we go to round two. Then round two uh, starts off, they start going at it, pop, 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 hitting each other. Khabib gets Justin Gagey down. Very fascinating, he gets in a position where he looks like Khabib is about to put Justin Gagey in another arm bar. Now, when you're about to have your arm extended, right, the last thing you wanna do, you never wanna go the opposite way. When you're getting your arm pulled, you actually wanna go one defense, is you wanna go into it, you wanna go into the pressure. So as it's being pulled, Justin Gagey turns into it as he does. Khabib changes it and actually instead of doing an arm bar, he falls on his back and now he puts him in a triangle. Mr. Gagey taps out and immediately, man, when Khabib wins and it's over, he just starts weeping. He starts crying because obviously, you know, all the emotions are coming out, all the anticipation from Fight Island and who was going to win and not to mention his, obviously, his father who had passed away earlier this year. So it was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy, you know, to see how dominant Khabib was because he was absolutely dominant. You know, it was it was such a perfect performance. He went in there, he implemented his game plan. Chael Sonnen said this perfectly. You know, you had a guy in Justin Gagey where you are so focused on what the other guy's got to plan on doing that it changes you, right? You start fighting differently. And in one sense, it makes sense because you're adapting it to him. But in another, man, when you change what you've done all your life, you know, you're bound to break apart. There's bound to be holes in your game. Uh, another really small, beautiful detail for the people who did watch the fight, when Khabib has Justin in this triangle, first of all, you rarely ever see uh, Khabib on his back. So when you had the wrestler Khabib on top of Justin Gagey, and he gave up that position to fall into his back to go into triangle, that was interesting. Then Justin Gagey was going to do a brilliant thing. He was about to pick up Khabib and slam him on the back of his head, but Khabib being as smart as he is, as Justin Gagey is about to lift him up while they're in this triangle, Khabib goes with an underhook right under Justin Gagey's leg. This way you can't lift him off the ground, or not that much. He had him a couple inches, but nothing that would have hurt him. So that was really well done. But absolutely class act performance from Khabib. And someone who you see is so stoic, so you know neutral, so just robotic. It was very interesting just to see him you know, breaking down and how emotional he was after the fight. And you know, like you folks know, after the fight ended, he comes out and he says, hey man, this is my last fight. You know, I was talking to my mom. She doesn't want me fighting anymore. I told her this is the last one and a promise is a promise. Now, with respect to the retirement, you know, we know, unfortunately, you know, in the world of fighting, retirement gets thrown around a lot, right? Floyd has retired how many times now? Three or four. McGregor's retired, what, twice? So it, I, it sucks because I feel like it devalues that, that name. But on the other side of it, you know, Khabib's not really a guy to, to what's the word, to make things up. You know, and I feel like if there's anyone who you want to take their word, Khabib is that guy. Now, chances are it's a very emotional time. It was an emotional fight. He wants to take a year off or however long off to fully mourn and get over what he wants to get over. And then when he's ready, then come back into the fighting business. It's totally possible, man. You know, a lot of people were like, Daniel, do you think he's really retired? I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to take him at his word, but it's very likely, man, he's going to be aware for a year, year and a half. He'll be upset. He'll be like, hey, man, I missed this. Don't get me wrong. Retired doesn't mean he's going to go live out at a farm and stop training. He's going to keep training. He's going to help the guys. He's going to be more of a, a trainer, more of a, a coach to, to the other guys, the younger guys there. But in terms of him performing, man, who knows? Maybe in a year or a year and a half, if he feels that itch to come back, he will uh, definitely do so. From a fight fan, could be retiring, man, it's upsetting. Because you see someone in their prime, you want them to go more, right? You're thinking, oh man, Khabib and GSP, or oh man, you know, let's get that Khabib and Ferguson. But to Khabib's point, and he said this so beautifully, 
in the post-fight interview, he's like, man, you have Poirier versus McGregor in January for the title. I choked them both out. Like convincingly, he beat them both convincingly. Like what is there left for me to do? You know, the GSP thing was kind of in the horizon, but I guess it just, um, maybe, I guess now is not the right time for him. You know, and uh, he, he said it really, really well. Unfortunately, what you get is when you have someone who is such a dominant champion and then they leave, when the UFC, not if, because I'm, I'm pretty confident in this, when they make McGregor versus Poirier for the title, because Khabib's gone, there's always going to be that underlying thought of like, you're not really the champion. Khabib just gave it up. If at any point he wants to come back, he could beat both of you. You know what I mean? Like, like unfortunately, there's that underlying thing. So th that, that's the only little unfortunate. Like, like when John Jones got suspended or whatever, he was gone. They gave the title to DC. And of course, the people watching, they're like, dude, you're just a, you're just a placeholder. You're just waiting. You're just going to hold it until Jones comes back and takes his title, right? So unfortunately, I feel like it's going to be that sort of a situation. The good news is, even with Khabib stepping away, there's a bunch of killers in that weight class, ladies and gentlemen. Like, it, like, if you're thinking like, oh man, Khabib's gone, it's gonna be boring. Man, you still got McGregor, you got Poirier, you got Justin, you got Michael Chandler, you got Tony Ferguson, you got Dan Hooker, you got Kevin Lee, you got Ally Quinta. There's still a bunch of guys who can mess around. And I mean, you, you can have a lot of fun fights. You can, I'm hearing uh, Michael Chandler versus Tony Ferguson. If you guys don't know who Michael Chandler is, check him out his um, YouTube highlights. They're very interesting. His fights with Benson Henderson and, um, uh, who's here? And Eddie Alvarez at Bellator. Very interesting. I would highly recommend them. So, so there was, there's a bunch of killers there. So don't be worried. Is it Khabib's last fight, man? We don't know. But um, I can't tell you as a human being how happy I am to see someone come into the sport, make as much money as possible, and leave without too many sustaining injuries, without too many permanent injuries, right? That, that's what happens when you go into martial arts, you're flirting with, with danger, right? When you have guys in these brutal wars and, and especially being a psychology student, right? You're aware of the head trauma and just getting the blows to the head and neurocognitive disorders and, and it's absolutely terrible, you know? Yeah, sure, you make, let's say, $100,000 a night, then that's like, that's amazing in a fight. If you're a good fighter, mind you, if you're one of the more popular ones. But it's like, dude, I can only imagine like you losing years of your life in one night. Like 200, 300, 400 shots, especially in boxing. You know, when they, when they have the big gloves so you don't see cuts as much and they, man, it's, it's, it's terrible. So to see Khabib happy and healthy and, and at least, man, if he leaves from a human being aspect, I'm really happy that he, he hasn't um, caused himself too much of serious injuries. So, so that is my, my note on that. You know, Justin Gagey can be phenomenal stuff. And, um, yeah, that really was my, my highlight of the weekend. It was just all doing schoolwork, and then I got to see that, to, that, that sweet fight. So that was cool. That was really cool. Now, folks, when I say that's all I got to do was, uh, recently I've had this new fire lit up under me, and, and I've been going so hard on schoolwork. My friends, let's talk about what it's like to be a student. Now, everyone's student life is a little bit different, right? Just because I describe the way that my student life is, it's not going to describe the way that the girls down the block is, right? But a lot of the times it's this. What you forget is when you have a nine to five job, man, you, you have that safeness of, oh, okay, at five, not always, but at five, man, my job ends. One of the blessings in disguise of being a student is your job doesn't really end, right? You go to lecture, whether that be online now or whatever, right, from let's say eight till 3.30, and then you do homework, and then you do assignments, and then you do readings until, you know, eight, nine, 10 p.m. So it never really ends. So in one sense, you know, you might envy people and be like, oh man, if I wasn't a student right now, I just go and at 5 p.m. and I'm done. I'm gonna watch TV, chips, whatever. On the other side, if you're looking at jobs where, you know, you have to do a lot of administration work yourself, if we're looking at entrepreneurial jobs, if we're looking at small business jobs, being a student is a phenomenal setup to just get into this idea of, hey man, there's not a set nine to five. Yeah, like you finish your lecture, now you gotta study, right? Now you gotta read these chapters, now you gotta do this quiz and assignment, now you gotta write this paper, now you gotta get ready for that presentation. So it keeps you constantly moving and constantly working and I think, um, you know, there are a lot of uh, negatives in the, in the school system, in the education system, but I think there's so many positives as well. And I think the majority of the positives come from the discipline, come from, you know, the pressure and, and you know, hey man, you got an assignment due this Friday. It, it's helping you work on your time management. It's working, it's helping you work on your responsibility, your organization skills. And overall, I think it's really, really good for helping you uh, pay attention to the smaller details and overall really add value to your character. And I think the improvements that you get from school rather than just that certificate or that degree or that diploma, there's a lot folks. There really, really is a lot. You know, my nights recently 
a lot of them have been staying up till one, two in the morning. And I don't say that to be like a brag and like, whoa, whoa, whoa. but sometimes I tell people like, I see, I get into this weird position, right? Where it's like, I never want to be like, hey, I work so hard. Look at me. I'm a hard worker, right? I, that's not, I don't like showing off, you know, but on the other hand, I do know how inspirational it is to see other people work out. You know, I don't know about you, but, but you know, I love seeing people work out. I love seeing the people who just said, you know, just went out on a run, you know, hashtag blessed. Like, I know we can make fun of them or whatever, but I love seeing that stuff because when I see them, I'm like, why am I not going out on a run? You know what I mean? And indirectly, I get positive inspiration from that. So with that in mind, you know, in that context of, of inspiring other people, it's like, yo, I have been staying up until, until two, three in the morning, um, last couple of days. And, and the biggest reason is, you know, the majority is school. It's really just trying to stay on top of everything. And it's, when I say school, this is really important. How well do you want to do on an assignment? There's some people who I know who just want to pass. Hey man, let me get that 55%. I'm out of here. That's totally cool. So we're like, hey man, listen, I don't want to get 55%, but you know what? If it's a 70 or if it's a 90, I don't really care. Guys, I have this competitive nature and, and it's good or bad, I don't know. But I want to do really, really, really well in whatever I'm in. The pro of that is you're always improving. You're always seeking to do better. You know, you always want to push yourself. And I got into this interesting mindset the other day. I was like, I hate it when I see other people in front of me. Now, that's contradictory because in the past I've said, I love when I see other people succeed. Let's break that down. When I see you succeed, I get happy for you. My immediate thought is like, wow, look at you. That's amazing. You, that is so inspirational. My second thought is, how can I get ahead? You know, how can I look at you and how can I get that energy that I get from seeing you succeed? How can I apply that to myself and push myself forward? Right? So, so when I say, hey, I want to be careful. I don't look je like jealous of anyone. I get excited for you, number one. And number two is, okay, looking at what this person just did, you know, how can I step my game up? How can I, you know, go forward? So it's actually a compliment to the person because they make me work harder. You know, seeing someone with more subscribers, seeing someone who posts more often, seeing a student who has better grades than me, they make me a better person. You know, they, they make me want to work harder and it's super inspirational and I'm super grateful to them. And sometimes it does come off as like, a, oh yeah, well, you know, you stay for two hours, I'm going to study for four. Like it's, but it's, it's playful, you know, it's playful. It's competitively playful in its nature. But man, I got to tell you folks, there's been so many times when you, I just feel unmotivated and it's, you know, sometimes you, you're sitting there and my biggest thing, man, is stimulation. I need constant stimulation. I need arousal. I need to, to to see something, you know, I, I need to get excited. I need to get my heart pumping. A lot of the times, you know, I'm just sitting back here with the, you know, the desktop and just reading and reading and, and writing and research and all that. And that's good. And that's amazing, you know, but every once in a while, man, I get into this position where I'm like, all right, do I do homework straight for just four or five hours? When I know probably the better thing in the long run is, hey man, do it for one hour or two hours and take a break, right? Do it for another 50 minutes, take a break, right? So sometimes I, I fall around in that, I've been feeling better than I've ever felt my entire life because of three things. I've been sleeping better, I've been eating better, and I've been exercising better. And I can't tell you how positively that's impacted me in my classes. I'm more awake, I ask more questions, I understand the concepts more thoroughly. When I find myself studying, I pick things up a lot quicker. I swear to God, guys, if you guys and gals, if you paid attention to your sleeping, to and let me play this out guys when i say sleeping i don't i don't mean you know go to bed at 9 p.m and wake up at 6 a.m it can be whatever you know i just told you i've been going to sleep at 2 a.m you know the perk of that is because in my schedule i have a class that starts at 10 30 a.m now i know i'm cutting it close but essentially man you know if i go to sleep at 2 if i wake up at 10 you know that's eight hours of sleep and i'm you know and that that's my that's my beautiful spot eight to nine hours so judge yourself, see what works for you. Obviously, now you have earlier classes, it would make sense to go to sleep earlier. But really, eating well, sleeping well, and exercising made me feel amazing. But I'm getting to a point now where I feel like there's just so much work that I haven't exercised in at least uh, at least a week, I want to say. week, Maybe even more, maybe even a week and a half. And it's worrying, you know, because the last thing I, I ever want to do is, you know, get this degree or whatever, wherever I am in life, right? Have the 9 to 5 group and just be super overweight and unhealthy and and just miserable you know and just not in a good shape and not feeling good always feeling sluggish and whatever so exercise is super important i've always said i think exercise is dangerous because 
a test, there's a deadline, right? You see it, it's a red, you know, font, and you got to submit a file or whatever. But there is no deadline for exercise. You are your own coach. You know, you got to call yourself out. You got to push yourself. You have to say, all right, man, you know, I got to get this workout in. So in that sense, I think exercise, man, can be dangerous if you don't take it seriously. You can really fall behind on it. And the research on the benefits of exercise are... I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, whatever I were to tell you, I'm gonna end up leaving some stuff out because it just has so many amazing benefits. But going, going back to my earlier discussion, though, you know, I sit there a lot and I get unmotivated, right? So I try to um, stimulate myself and my go-to things to watch are stand-up comedy and like fighting, right? Because I find that so adrenaline boosting, right? And I call it barbaric and sick and inhumane, man. Whatever, everyone's got their thing. My thing is, you know, is watching two martial artists try to force their will on one another or watching stand-up comedy where I can just kind of laugh and relax and, you know, be taken on this world, you know, this, this journey, these storytellings and whatever, these punchlines. You know, usually when I get that, it stimulates me again and then I can go back to homework and whatever. What do you folks do? What do you folks do, like, as a break? Like, just to relax, just to kind of, you know, get your mind off of stuff, to, what's the word, to, to, get re-energized when you go back to work or go back to doing homework. Like I, my guesses are, you know, exercise or probably like, I don't know, like myself watching Netflix, YouTube, meditation, you know, journaling. I think it's all amazing. I think it's all absolutely amazing. You know, whatever you can do to just boost yourself up. If I can add one more thing is this, if you're ever in a place where you forget why you're doing what you're doing, immediately remind yourself, right? When you're doing that last push up and you're thinking, man, why am I doing this? It's really important that you have your why. It's really important that, that you always, that you, that you have built this belief and that you constantly support and you go, hey man, this is why I'm exercising. Because I told myself I have this goal. The stronger your goal, the stronger your why, the harder it'll be for you to get unmotivated. Like you, you'll be on this path, I'm telling you. The people who end up falling off and end up not being consistent are the people who don't have a strong why. Right, like if I'm doing homework, and I found this out back in, high school and if I was like all right why am I doing this I'm doing this because the teacher said so I wasn't gonna get the homework done I don't care what you say but when I could play this game I'd be like well because the teacher said so I'm like all right well, why do I care what she says well because she can give me a good grade why does that matter well because I want to get a good, good GPA well why does that matter well because I want to get into a good school and because I want to get a good job because I want to make good money because I want to live a good lifestyle oh so I'm doing this homework because I want to have a good lifestyle that makes so much more sense to me than just I'm just doing this just because she said so but when you can when you can connect your conscious thought of the present moment and you can connect it to this vision that you have in the future I don't know about you but it just it makes so much more sense to me you know I get that much more excited to want to take the step you know to want to take the initiative it makes that much more sense you know I find myself instead of like dragging myself to do it like I'm jumping you know I'm, I'm lifted I'm excited I'm enthusiastic about it and, and that's what's been happening recently too. I've recently been in these positions where I, man, I don't know what it is. I See, I keep saying like, oh man, like I've been working a lot. Like, like there've really been days where I'm just working like from morning till night. And the only breaks that I take are to sleep, excuse me, <laughs> obviously sleep, but to eat, I think that's it. The only reason I take, literally just, just to go and eat. And then I come back here. Like it's nuts. You know, with the exception of that, you know, that UFC pay-per-view, that's, that's all I'm doing. That's life right now. No work, you know, nothing. No martial arts. I have an exercise in a week and a half. It's just been wake up, study, finish my studies and homework at maybe 11.30 midnight. And now, let's work on Daniel Teaches. So now it's like one in the morning and I'm out here, you know, working on the brand and making social media posts and memes and, and editing podcasts and, and doing whatever. You know, so I should preface that too. It's not just the schoolwork that takes me till two in the morning. You know, it's the, okay, you know, I have schoolwork and that's extremely important, but I'm also trying to build a business, you know, and I understand that the importance of school and the importance of work and I want to do both. And if you want to do both, you got to put in the extra hours and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. You know, it's very hard for me to come out here and to preach positivity and hard work and discipline and patience, you know, and then find myself not following through on those concepts, you know? Because I, I do find myself in positions where I'm like, all right, you know what, I studied for two hours of the subject, now I did two hours of this kind of psychology, 
I read one chapter of this, man, I'm tired. I'm, I just like, it's weird because I'm not even tired of, of like, I want to go to bed. I'm just tired of doing this work. I just want to go do something that's not this, but I have to get this done. You know, and my why is like, you know, I have certain goals that I want to achieve. And, and the more, you know, in the, in the near future, I'll start opening up to you folks a little bit more about what that looks like because it's, it's irrelevant at this point in time. But I have certain goals that I want to achieve. And if I want to achieve said goals, I got to do really, really well in my classes. I have to I have to be exceptional in what I do, not to mention not just my classes, but this, right? Like, I want to give you the best, most valuable content that I can while constantly learning, right? And, and I want to give it to you at a consistent fashion. I want you to get good, consistent content over long periods of time. And I, and I think when we do that, we're going to be in this really good place where, you know, I'm learning, I'm becoming more knowledgeable. And whether you want to watch one Daniel Teaches video a month or for the guy who wants to watch Daniel Teaches video, you know, a day, like it'll, it'll be out there for you. You know, and there'll be different ways to consume the content. But really, folks, that, that's what's been on my mind. It's been this double-edged sort of being a student where it's like, man, at one point it sucks because it's like, dude, I, I just, I want to not have to work until 2, 3 in the morning, you know? But on the other hand, it's like, it's really good for, for shaping you, for, for shaping your character, you know? For getting you used to this idea of, man, I think the coolest thing in the world is when I talk to people who are like, yeah, man, I woke up at 6 in the morning, did a little bit of meditating, went to school, came home, went to work, came home, worked on homework, worked on my blog, and repeated it the next day. I think that is the most gangster stuff ever. I swear to God. I think that's so cool. And I think I'm, I'm so envious of that. Plus, you know, you're still getting eight hours of sleep. You're still exercising when you can. You're still eating well. I think that's absolutely amazing, folks. I think we, we should strive to be better. We should strive to be amazing in everything that we do. And, and here's the part, you know, because what I'm saying might sound super stressful. Maybe they go, Daniel, you know, to be amazing at, at everything that we do. And that sounds like, I mean, how is that even possible? There's two things that are beautiful to this. One is your definition of amazing might be different than my definition of amazing. Right. And the second is I started kind of thinking differently. Um, I started thinking, well, instead of always trying to be the best, because sometimes I can't control what other people do. How about I just try my best? I'll tell you why. You know, back in high school, folks, I had this this shift in mindset. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start doing really well in my studies. Like, I'm going to start doing really well. I'm going to start going after it. And I did sensational. Like, my grades were exceptional in my last two, two years of high school. And then when I came to university, I found myself... Okay, let me, let me preface this by saying, in high school, I was in a bunch of classes where a quarter of the kids didn't show up, right? A quarter of the kids were barely trying to pass. The other ones, they were like kind of into the content, not into the content. It wasn't too hard to succeed. Whereas here in university, I found myself in a group of 150 to 200 killers, all talking about honors thesis and, and getting doctorates and working in labs. And I'm like, Jesus, these, this, this is, these are a different breed of people. Like, like there's a different mentality, my friends. And I went in there and, and the same, I would argue the same habits that and this is just my story i don't know about yours but the same habits that in high school would get me a 98 percent over here they'd slap a 71 on me and say all right buddy good on, good job and i remember and again i don't mean to be that guy to be like oh 71's well, bad not at all but just it was it was definitely a wake-up call you know from what you're used to to what you end up getting and it was like whoa you know i'm i'm really not as good as i thought i was it just, you see, right? Because your perception of yourself and, and of life is determined of what's around you, right? It's determined of your environment. It's determined of the people who you surround yourself with. You know, I've said this example before. If I'm in a group of super unhealthy, overweight people, they don't work out, they're not in good shape, I'm going to think I'm freaking Adonis. Like, I'm, I'm built. Now, take me and put me in a group of people who are really muscular, like overly bodybuilders, and I'll think, like, I'm anorexic or something, but I would say that, you know, that that's, it's important for the person to be mindful of, of, you know, who are they looking at, right? Who are they comparing themselves to, right? What does that population look like? Is that a fair representation? You know, is that, you know, as they would say, is that random sampling, right? Is that, you know, everybody, or are you just looking in a certain area? Why did I start talking about this? Where was I going with this? Okay, so this is my point. This is my point. So, you know, I really went from, you know what, Daniel, you're in this group of 150, 200 killers, man. Even if you're not the best, 
let's forever focus on trying our best. My biggest regrets in life will never ever be losing. Never. They'll never be coming in second. They'll never be not being enough. My biggest regrets in life will forever be not giving more what I know I could have. If I put it all on the line and I do everything I possibly can, anything that's possibly imaginable, and it comes up short, man, I sit there, man, I have my answer. And I, I will take it on the chin and it is what it is and I'll live to see another day. But if I lose, if I do not achieve what I thought I was capable of, if I do not reach that potential, and I know I could have pushed further, I know I could have dedicated a little bit more time and I would have had that result, that would break my heart. That would absolutely break my heart. Because I know that you can push further. Because I know that you could be greater than what you are. And that's why I think it's everything, folks. I think it's, it's important to always try your best at everything, right? Go hard at everything. Go hard in your relationships. Go hard at school. Go hard at work. You know, go hard everywhere. Exceed expectations if you can. No, screw it. Everybody can. But please, when you are trying to push yourself forward, do not forget, right? Be, make sure you're eating well. Make sure you're sleeping well. Make sure you're exercising. You're taking care of yourself. Make sure that you are okay. Like, shout out to uh, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Make sure that your needs are all right. And then just start shelling it out, man. Start exceeding expectations in life. Start going the extra mile. Start pushing forward. Because is that not what life is all about? I could stop doing homework right now and go watch TV. Will that really give me more satisfaction than doing homework? In the short term, maybe. But in the long term, you know, and then what? I just won't go to my classes anymore. I just won't go to work anymore. Well, then I might as well just not change clothes anymore. Might as well stop showering anymore. Like, dude, you might as well bury me tomorrow. Life is this. Life is about being put in uncomfortable situations, doing what you, not necessarily what you want to do, but what you need to do. If you remember one thing from this podcast, from, from this episode, let it be this. This question is extremely important to always keep around in life. Ready for it? What do you need to do in order to do the things you want to do? What do you need to do in order to do the things that you want to do? You might not necessarily want to take a geography class. But you do want that degree. You do want that lifestyle. And that lifestyle, you know, that job comes through that degree. And that degree comes through getting a good grade in this class. You got to understand, man, you're not going to love doing everything. And that's okay. But as long as you love the outcome, be willing to pay for it. Be willing to, to get down and crawl in the trenches and the cold and, and it's dirty and muddy. Be willing to do that as long as the outcome is what you're looking for. Be willing to put it. You don't have to love the process the entire time. There are going to be bits and pieces that are going to make you uncomfortable that you're not going to love. But at the end, man, you've got to take a step back and go, I am doing everything that I can because of this outcome. This outcome is going to make everything worth it. Now, I am on this path. I am not going to leave this path. Nothing is going to get in my way. I'm going to get stressed. Uh, you know, things might pop up here and there. I'm not going to let anything phase me. And I'm going to march forward like a soldier on a mission. Because I know what I have to do and I know where I want to go to. I might not love this particular path, but I love the destination. And I am willing to go on said path to make it to that destination. When you understand where you want to go in life, I think that's 50% of it. I think 50 per May, it is just so comforting. It is just a very comforting idea when you know where you want to go in life. That's 50%. The other 50% is when you can find the beauty in the journey. Because the last thing I want you to do is be so stressed about, man, I can't wait to be there. You know, I can't wait to blow up. I can't wait to have the degree. I can't. That, that you just completely are blindsided to the beauties around you. And then, you know, when you do have that degree, you know, whatever, years later, you do have that promotion, or you do, you know, X, you're not going to be this age anymore. And you're going to look back and go, you know what, man, 
I was constantly ch chasing these materialistic things and the money and, and this and that and this degree. But man, I wish I would have gone out with my friends a little bit more. Man, I wish I would have, you know, hung out. Take it a little bit easy every once in a while. I wish we would have gone out to an extra party here or there. So please, my friends, learn to enjoy the process. Enjoy every single step of the journey. I know it sounds super contradictory because I just said you don't have to love everything. You know, and it's normal, again, to, to feel stressed and to be like, oh, I feel unmotivated. But just please, please, please remember, everything is temporary. Nothing lasts. Enjoy it for what it is. There's always a positive to everything. There really is. You know, I'm arguably the most optimistic, positive person you ever meet in your life. Or if I'm not number one, man, show me who number one is. I'm the guy who will break both of his legs and say, oh, well, thank God my arms are okay. <laughs> Seriously. So I'm a huge believer in, man, when you get a situation, it is not bad or it is not good. You can get whatever you want out of it. Now, I know there are the extreme cases, but please, my friends, for the sake of this context, Right. Generally speaking, the less severe situations, we're not talking about a mugging or kidnapping or plane going down. For the less severe situations, you can choose to look at the positive. You can choose to look at the journey and go, man, this sucks. I just want to get this over with to get to my destination. Or you can think to yourself and go, this is like a rose with a thorn. It's got its beauties. It it's definitely has its things, you know. Let me enjoy this as much as I can. Let me learn as much as I can. Let me, let me really take everything in and be as present as I can be. So that when I get to the destination, it feels that much better. It didn't feel like I just rushed through everything, kept my head down and just sped. But I looked around and I really enjoyed it because I promise you, my friends, when you do increase in age and when you finally get there, It'll be painful trying to look back and not being able to see anything because you were looking down the entire time. I'm Daniel. This has been another episode. Thank you for joining me. And take care, my friends. Stay safe.